Welcome to our October Sanchalana teacher training module. The topic chosen for this month's module is on the elements of speaking English in a classroom 3.0. Before we begin our module, let's have a quick recap on what we learnt and discussed in our previous modules. We saw how language tools have three major categories. The three major language speaking tools are vocabulary set, simple questions and simple sentences. We extensively learned how to build our vocabulary. Under the vocabulary set, we have three basic categories, meaning that if we are given a topic, words can be put into three basic categories. They are definition, features, and examples. Under the definition category, words that briefly describe the topic are put. Under the features category, words that talk about the basic features or characteristics of a topic are put. Third, under the examples category, words that are examples related to any particular topic are put. Now, in this module, we will concentrate on the language tool to create simple questions. Here we will learn how to build simple questions. We will see seven basic types of question starters. We will learn how to use question starters for different vocabulary categories like definition, features and examples. And finally, we will learn about open-ended and closed-ended questions. The milestones and learning outcomes that we will cover in this module are milestones 5, animals and birds with habitats, milestone 6, names of vehicles, this is for grade 4 and 5, for grade 6, we will cover prepositions from learning outcome 6.5, and for grade 7, we will look at learning outcome 7.5, that is, participates in activities like group discussion, riddles, etc. Teachers, please note, these are not the milestones or learning outcomes for this month, but since we are at the end of our term, we will be using these milestones and learning outcomes as examples for the language tool to create simple questions. A few things you need to keep in mind before we start this process are the different icons you will see in this module. If you see a here icon, it means you have to listen very carefully to what we are saying. If you see a man with the speech bubble, that means you have to speak to your teacher mentor and give responses for any activities or questions we ask. If you look at two people with two speech bubbles, that means it is a paired activity and you have to speak to your partner. So, let's begin our journey. As we said, we will concentrate on the language tool that is simple questions. Before we see how to build simple questions, let's do a small activity around questions. Here is a picture presented to you on the screen. The activity requires you to frame some questions about this picture. Teachers, please note that the questions can be about anything and everything in this picture. You have about a minute's time for this activity. Is it going to rain? Is that a train I see? Why is the floor wet here on the platform?
how many tracks can you see in this picture? Which platform are the policemen standing on? Do you think there is electricity in the railway station? Let's make it a little better now. The same picture is given to you again, but this time with small addition. We want all of you to frame questions about this picture, but using specific words. Please frame questions that start from the words what which and when. Remember that it can be about anything and everything in the picture, but your question must start with these three words. Again, you have about a minute's time to do this activity. What is the man standing on the platform doing? Which colored train do you see in this picture? Where are the advertisement holdings in this picture? How many numbers can you see in this picture? Let's make it even better. The same picture is again presented to you and you are required to use the same words to start your questions, which are what, which and where. But this time, there's another addition. Make sure that the questions that you are framing is based on the definition of an object. Please note that it can be about any and every object that you see in the picture, but the question must be to ask about the definition of that particular object. And if you have framed such a question, Move forward and frame another question to ask about the feature of an object. You have again a minute's time to do this activity. What is the place where trains come and go called? What is the place where people Board trains called? Which part of the railway station do people stand on? Where in this picture do you see the train running? Which part of the railway station can we find shops? Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Pa, for taking us through this activity where we have asked questions. Now, why do we ask questions? Because questions help stimulate learning about any given topic. Now, we have seen how to ask questions using question frameworks and questions from the Kalika Chetrike. But how do we build our own questions? Let's learn in this module. Now, question building. What are some of the things we need to know to build our own questions? Now, the foundation or the basic is basic question starters. Then the next step is 
question starters for vocabulary categories. And finally, the step 3 is building questions for specific answers. And this is how we build or create questions. Now let's look at the different steps involved. Step 1 is the 7 basic types of question starters. Now, what are these question starters? These are words that you begin a question with. They are who, what, when, where, why, how and which. Now, when do we use the question word who? We use it to ask for a person. We use what to ask for information about things and actions. We use when to ask for information about time. We start a question with where to ask for information about place. And we ask the question why when we want to find out a reason. We begin the question with how if we want to know the condition quality or manner of something. And finally, we use the question word which to ask for specific information. We will see how to create basic questions using question starters for milestones 5, animals and birds with habitats and milestone 6, names of vehicles. Let us see how to use the 7 basic question starters with the topic animals and birds. Who does the hyena depend on for food? What do lions eat? When does a crow fly? Where can you find a sparrow? Why does a camel drink a lot of water at once? How does a hen eat its food? Which animal has the longest neck? Now let us see how to use the basic question starters when the topic is a fox. What is a fox? Where does a fox live? When does a fox sleep? Which animal does the fox hunt? Who is the fox afraid of? How does a fox find food? Why does the fox have long ears? Now, moving on to our first Sanchalana activity. Teachers, remember that here you need to use Question starters to ask about an auto rickshaw. This activity requires you to give your responses to your respective teacher mentors at the Sanchalana Center. The question starters that you can use for this activity are what, where, when, why, which, who, and how. Using this, Please come up with questions about an auto rickshaw. Your time starts now and you will be given about two minutes for this activity. What is an auto rickshaw? Where can I find an auto rickshaw? When does your auto come to pick you up? Who is that man sitting inside the auto? How many wheels does an auto rickshaw have? Which part of the auto rickshaw is open? Why is the headlight of the auto rickshaw in the front wheel? What color is the seat of the auto rickshaw driver?
how many people can an auto rickshaw carry? Moving forward to step two. Here we will use question starters for different vocabulary categories like definition, features, and examples. Now, if you remember, every topic will have three basic vocabulary categories that is, definition, features, and examples. Now, let us see. What are the question starters for each of these basic vocabulary categories? Now, for definition, we can ask questions like what, how, who, and where. If you want to find out more about the features category, we can begin our questions with what, which, and where. And if you want to ask questions about the examples, you can ask. The questions that begin with what, where, when, why, and who. Now, let us learn to use these question starters for each of these vocabulary categories. We will see this in Learning Outcome 6.5 and we'll concentrate on prepositions. Now, what is a preposition? Let's look at the definition. Now, prepositions tell us where something is or when something is happening. What are the features of a preposition? We have words like short words, comes before nouns, indicate location, relationship and time. And the examples of preposition include on, up, down, between, along. And this is an exhaustive list. Now, let us see how to use or create questions using question starters for the definition category. We can use question words like what, how, who, and where. When we want to ask something like what is a preposition or what tells us where something is. We can also use the question word how. How do we know where something is? Or how do we know when something is happening? The step two is using question starters to frame questions based on the features category. We can use words like what, which, and where. Let's look at a few examples like which. Which word indicates location? Or which word comes before a noun? We can also use the question starter where. Where do we use words that indicate relationship or indicate time? And finally, stage three is using question starters to frame questions based on the examples category. Like, when? When do we use the preposition on or with what? What does the word on tell us? Moving on to our next Sanchalana activity. Here, teachers, you all are required to pick a question starter and ask questions about the features of prepositions. We've seen a list of question starters that can be used for the features of prepositions. Please do come up with different kinds of questions. You have about two minutes time for this activity. Teachers, please note that you must individually give your responses to your mentors at the center. What are short words that come before nouns and indicate location called? Which words indicate relationship?
how many types of words do you think indicate time? Why do we use short words that indicate relationship and time? Where do we use short words that indicate location? Now let us look how to combine categories and frame a different question. Like, which preposition do you use to indicate time? Here we have combined the definition category and the features category. What do you call short words that tell us where something is? Or when something happens. Here as well, we have combined the features category and the vocabulary from the definition category. Why is the word between called a preposition? Now, here we have combined the examples category and vocabulary from the definition category. Now that we have learned how to frame questions by using more than one categories or combining categories let's do an activity about that here again you must pick question starters and combine categories meaning it can be features definition or examples and features or definition and examples to ask questions about prepositions teachers please note that you have about two minutes time to perform this activity. What kind of words tell us where something is and indicate its location with time? How many words are used or can be used to indicate relationship and time? Why is the word along called a preposition? Now, we have seen how we can use question starters for milestones on, based on animals and birds and also for a learning outcome based on preposition. But what about group discussion? In the Kalika Chetrike Handbook, Learning Outcomes 7.5 and 7.5a has group discussion as a major part of it. Now let's see how we can use these question starters for these three different basic vocabulary categories and come up with a good group discussion. Let's say the group discussion topic that is taken up with the learners is on the market. We again divide the topic into three basic categories, namely definition, features, and examples. And we fill in words into each of these categories, meaning that the definition of a market will be something like this. It is a public place where people gather to buy and sell things. The features of a market would be something like this. A common place, items are bought and sold for a price. Items are displayed. And examples of the market would be fruit and vegetable market, fish market, and farmer's market. Now again, how do we frame questions based on these vocabulary categories? It's again by simply using question starters. For the definition category, we could use question starters like what, how, who, and where and frame questions based on the definition. It could be something like this. What is a public place where people gather to buy and sell things called? If we use the question starter where, a question like where do we find a public place where people gather to buy and sell things could be framed. 
And if the group discussion moves forward and we have to talk about and discuss about the features of the market, question starters like this could be used to frame effective questions. Using the question starter where, we could ask, where do you find items bought and sold for a price? And using the question starter what, we could come up with questions like, what do you call a common place where items are displayed? And the last category on examples, when the group discussion requires the learners and participants to give out examples about the topic, they could come up with these kind of questions using question starters like what, where, when, and why. Questions like, where have you seen a fish market? When do you go to the fruit and vegetable market? Why do you go to the farmer's market? All of these questions are based on the examples of the topic market. Our next Sanchalana activity is a pair work activity. Teachers, here you must pick a question starter and ask your partner questions about the examples of the market. Examples have been given and question starters have also been given. You have about two minutes time to come up with different kinds of questions based on this. Which fruit market do you like? When do you think the fish arrive at the fish market? When do you go to the farmer's market? Where have you seen a vegetable market before? Why do you go only to the farmer's market? Now that we have seen how to frame questions for each of these categories and have practiced it as well, let's see and try to combine these categories and frame questions. If we need to frame questions based on more than one category, which is very likely to happen in a group discussion, where definition, features, and examples have to be discussed all together, questions like these could be formed. Where can you find a common place where people gather to buy and sell things? This question is based on the definition and features of the market. How are items bought and sold for a price at a fruit and vegetable market? This is a question based on both the features and examples category of the topic market. Now to our last Sanchalana activity. This is also a pair work where you as teachers must pick question starters and combine categories to ask questions to your partner about the market. We have seen how in a group discussion, it is important to ask questions based on different categories of the topic. And so here, let us practice it with the topic market. Here again, you will be given two minutes of time to perform this activity. Where can you find a place where items are bought and sold for a price directly from the farmers? How are items displayed at a fish market? When does that public place where people gather to buy and sell vegetables open? Now this brings us to our last step. Step three is building questions for specific answers using question starters to form assessment questions. Now there are two types of questions here. 
one is an open ended question and the other is a closed ended questions open ended questions now what are they now these are questions that cannot be answered with a yes or a no response these questions allow students to give a free form answer as in they can answer in a full sentence these questions have answers based on the complete knowledge feeling and understanding of a particular topic for example the definition of a topic what are the question starters that can be used to frame questions or to frame open ended questions we can use the question word what now what questions ask about information regarding the topic we can use why questions to ask for reasons related to a topic we can use the question starter how if you want to ask the condition quality or a method of something let's look at an example of how to frame questions with these question starters now what what is a vehicle now the answer to this is any machine that transports people animals or things is called a vehicle a vehicle can be found on land water or air a vehicle can be fast or slow why why do we use a verb we use a verb to indicate an action performed by a person animal or object and finally how do we use the question word how to from a question how do you write a newspaper headline the perfect headline is short accurate and attention grabbing the news headline should be clear and specific using only a few words what are closed ended questions now questions that could be answered with a one word answer or a simple yes or no questions that have short and direct answers like single or groups of words short sentences or phrases these also can have answers based on specific aspects of the subject for example features or examples related to a topic let's look at what kind of question starters can be used to frame closed ended questions we can use the which word which asks us about specific information we can use the question starter where if you want to ask for a location and we can use the question starter when when you want to ask for the time let's look at an example which which vehicle can travel on water the answer is a ship where where can we find a headline in a newspaper advertisements or a tv channel when when do we use a verb we use a verb to describe what the subject is doing now let us see or let us look at assessing two types of questions that are open ended and closed ended questions now open ended questions can be given more marks as they require the students to answer in full sentences recalling complete knowledge about a topic they have learnt these questions can carry 4 5 or 10 marks and closed ended questions can be given few marks as they require students to give specific answers using single or groups of words phrases or short sentences these can be given for 1 2 or 3 marks let's look at a few examples of open ended questions what is your experience of visiting the market or why do people go to the railway station we can also ask question like how did toto cat feel when he found the cap 
Now, all these questions require a student to give answers in a full sentence. They have to recall the complete knowledge that they know about the specific topic that the question is being asked. Now, let's look at examples for closed ended questions. Where is the cap? Now, let us look at a few closed ended questions. Where was the cap? When do we know a train is about to leave? Which market do you visit when you want to buy fruits? Now, these closed ended questions require students to give specific answers using just a few words or a group of words or short sentences. And that is why we can give them for one, two, or three marks each. This brings us to the end of our module. We have learned how to build questions, what kind of words can we use to start our questions with, and how can we put them in different categories, and how can we create assessment questions. Thank you, teachers, for being such a lovely audience.